are now on our way to Arklow. So it's going to take about eight hours. The wind's blowing about 18 knots between well between 11 and 18 knots. I didn't film us coming off the uh, off the dock because, quite honestly, my face was a bit like this. Um, but we did it straight around with no problems. So I should have filmed it really. <laughs> I should always film the the, uh, the bad ones as well as the good ones. But that was all right. We went we came straight round and out. Um, worked out where the wind was coming from and allowed the, the back of the boat to come out so that the wind was catching the back of the boat um, because our boat suffers from what is called prop walk and quite a lot of water holes do. Um, they, uh, they pull to one side or the other when you put it in reverse. This one pulls that way so it'll, it'll pull us round to port or the left hand side if you're facing forward. Um, and the wind was blowing the wrong way to do that. I could just see us going sideways down the uh, <laughs> down the row of boats. It's probably not the best thing. So, um, so I let the back wander out as far as I could. So it was already going the right direction. And then let the let the ropes go and, and just very gently came out backwards. Um, so that's it. We're uh, on our way, and um, nothing much to report. Uh, we're about an hour an hour away. Uh, no, hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half away from uh, Barclow and uh, it's just been horrible. It's been horrible. Um, howling gales, sort of 30, 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, 30 miles knots an hour, knots even, and uh, down to like 12, and then 20, and then 30, and 15. It's just been all over the place. And uh, I'll show you around there. That's the weather that's coming at us at the moment, and um, it's wet, and I don't like it. And over there, of course, it's dry, and over there is dry, but it seems to be following us all the way along the coast. Um, the dry weather that is. It's not arrived where we are. We kept copying every bit of it. In a minute, it's going to be a huge downpour from uh, over that way. If you can see that on there, I'll try and zoom in when I put it on the editor. Uh, but it's just falling out of the sky, and the, the visibility's gone from the horizon down to about 100 meters for about five minutes, and then put us back like this again. He says now it's just going to pour down for the rest of the afternoon. But it's okay, we're nearly there and we're at our last, I think it's going to be our last point in, in Ireland and then we're going to hop across to Wales, uh, Milford Haven Way. I don't think we'll probably go into Milford Haven just because it's an extra long way to get down to Milford Haven and back out again. Uh, I think there's a point called Sandy Bay, I think it's called Sandy Bay or Sand Sandy something. Uh, no, it's not, it's not, that's somewhere entirely different, it's called Dale. I'll check that up and I'll put it here somewhere. Uh, and then we'll go from there to Padstow, uh, if, if everything's okay. We need to find somewhere to fill up with, with diesel. We've, we've motored quite a lot of this, despite the huge winds. Um, we've been struggling to keep it in, in the right uh, direction for the wind. So, when you're in that quandary then of do we go straight in the direction we want to go um, and cut quite a bit of time off or do we sail it in the weather and the muck and I'm too old for that stuff now um, I want to sail in the sunshine which we did for quite a while um, in the summer but right now it's uh, it's not nice it's not nice and I've banged my head so hard today I've done something to my back um, we've shut the clear perspex um, hatch cover. I can't see it when I'm, that, you know, it's, it's the wrong distance for me without glasses on, so I went spannering straight into it. And now my neck hurts and my back hurts, so I think I'm going to have a good day tomorrow. Uh, apart from that, <laughs> everything's great. So we're another step closer home, but there's nothing very exciting for you to see in the grey. It's, it's, it's a bit grey and crappy, but uh, 
I might leave it, I might put it back on just to show you the rain when it comes down in a minute. Yuck. Looks like we're going to miss this school, but uh, you can see. That's the edge of it. That's where it's just on the edge of. And that's uh, it's about a mile away over there. Because uh, we're coming in for the last turn and then we're going into, into Arklow. So we're about an hour away now. now that the uh, wind will stay down until we get in it's, uh, it's about 10 knots and I can cope with that but 20-30 knots is always a bit uh, bit of a worry when you're coming into somewhere you don't know and where you've got to go it's uh, it's not ideal but uh, that's where we're going right over there where the I don't know if you see it we're in front of Ellen the uh, well, it would be in front of Ellen otherwise it'd be on the boat Duh. Um, so uh, yeah, over there, somewhere, uh, there's a yacht harbour, I think. Here we are at Arklo. People out racing their boats, by the it. And out there. And we are going straight ahead, right there, which I couldn't see until the last minute. So I'm looking at all the wall all the way around, and I couldn't see a break in it. Uh, but there it is, that's where we're going in. the world's tiniest gap into the world's tiniest marina um, it's literally oh, it's impossible to to get around the corner here um, I don't know what I'm going to do when the, the, these guys on the opposite pontoon will be back in later on so if they're here when we uh, when we go I'm not quite sure how we're going to get out um, it was a 97 point turn to get in and the guy on this boat here said, uh, yeah, he said, uh, don't touch anything in the water. If you do touch anything in the water, wash your hands afterwards. He says, raw sewage gets pumped in. That's lovely, isn't it? They've been fined and fined and fined, apparently. And, uh, and now they're building a sewage works, but apparently it's, um, the water's a bit icky. So anyway, we're here and I'm going to have a look around quickly and see what's going on or not. <coughs> so you can see the length of our boat there. It's less than the gap across there. Uh, rather the gap across there is less than the length of our boat so when the boats are long here that's going to be really interesting to get out still no mind so we've just come back from uh, from a little foray to Starbucks uh, to get a coffee and um, sorry that's better isn't it um, coffee and a bit of cake and just chill out for a bit because that was hard work today uh, the wind was incredible uh, and, uh, and we managed to, after a lot of messing about, managed to get the boat in when we uh, got here. And um, there were guys out racing in the bay and they've all come back. So now the 40, 50 feet that were behind us is now about 20. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting getting back out again. Um, I may need more fenders. It'll be right pulls to port anyway so but what I did think was that the um, the weather and the wind the wind and whatnot <coughs> is gonna be uh, 
what's going to stop us getting out of here because if it is blowing a holy when we leave I'm not sure how I'm going to get around the corner <laughs> quickly enough to get get straight and point us back out again oh well I think So that, that place is meant to go do um, good food? Yes. Cool. For our viewers who might come here. <laughs> That's quite nice, quite colourful. That's everything you want really? There's everything here, isn't there? Pharmacy up there. Quite a lot of pubs. Oh, that's a that's long, long way up there. Tattoo studio for our Round Britain tattoo. Are we going to do that then? <laughs> no. If I can think of something good, baby. But, uh, that's a no. Well, swallows 5,000 miles. We're not going 5,000 miles. Uh, I'm not really bothered about swallows. I've got my, my body anywhere, really. Basically, as soon as we found, well, what? So, as soon as we found what? And there is the sad truth of the matter of what gets flushed down the loo and ends up in the harbour. Um, yeah, not good. Took a picture of uh, um, somebody's office today, the office window, obviously. A, member of uh, or the local equivalent of an MP or, or whatever it is and he said that they'd uh, spent quite a lot of money on a new sewage water treatment plant because Arklow doesn't have any uh, and we're guessing at the amount of people live here but that's 15,000 people um, or more and uh, everything that gets flushed into the to the river into the river so that has got whatever's come out of all the people that live here in it and in this day and age I think that's absolutely unforgivable still never mind what's one extra condom to anybody so we're just looking at um, Predict Wind, which is uh, an app you can get, I think you can get it on your Android or your Apple or on your laptop. And Predict Wind um, has the, the straightforward one, which you don't have to pay for, and then it has ones that you do pay for, which are more accurate. So you can tell what the weather is doing on the day that you want to sail, which when you're out in the Irish Sea is pretty important. So we're just looking at it. Uh, if you can turn your laptop around so that it's facing the the, the screen and put it up. Um, these are the predicted winds on a number of different models. So there are different models um, depending on who's done it, which work in different ways. But if they all line up more or less the same, you've got a fairly good chance of the weather being as it's written on there. And you've got days, um, uh, the dark ones are night and the light ones are day. So that's it's pretty straightforward. Um, what else can you do with it? Well, we uh, you can do some weather routing with it. I bought the weather routing 
um, aspect of it for a month to kind of try it out because we've got pro probably one of our, I don't know if it's the longest hop, but certainly one of our most technical hops across the Irish Sea. And we thought it might be interesting to see what the predictive weather thing did. So we still need to play with that. We haven't actually played with that yet. Um, but it's looking like we have a good, potentially a good forecast um, to uh, go home next, early next week. It's yeah. Friday now. It's so. Friday now. We've got a day of, of light, lighter winds, which we're going to use to get down to Kilmore Quay. And then uh, we've Kilmore Quay is down um, near Ross Lair, which is where the har the, the harbour, where it's just where the harbour is that the ferries go from from there to where do they go across to? Mm. Wales somewhere. <laughs> uh, you Hollyhead. can you can look Hollyhead. Yes, I couldn't think what it was called. I knew it was something Holly. Um, so you can you can get a ferry between the, the mainland and here. Um, well worth a trip, by the way. Ireland's a great place. Nice people. Uh, so we're going to get down to there, which is the shortest point across to the UK. But we're thinking of going straight from here down um, past Land's End, which is the last southwesterly part of the UK, um, Cornwall, and then straight round up to the Helford River, or straight round back home, which is how many hours? Well, it looks like it'd be a day and nine hours to just go home from Kilmore Quay. Um, we'd been looking at doing Kilmore Quay to Dale in Pembrokeshire <coughs> and Wales, which is about 12, 13 hours maybe, or Padstow, <coughs> but that's 24 hours. And we suddenly looked at it and went, actually, an hour and a, sorry, a day and nine hours, it might just be worth getting home while we have a, a yeah. weather window. There's plenty more time for, for sailing. Um, we can do some sailing through the winter as well and go and see some other places and do some more episodes on, on wherever we end up. Mm. Um, always open to any um, any ideas that you might have on that so chuck something in the comments where you'd like to have a look um, obviously somewhere we can get a yacht in would be helpful um, not in the middle of a, a city and um, so yeah I'm actually working next Tuesday Wednesday Thursday typically because the nice days to go next week are Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and then it seems like the winds come in really tough Friday Saturday Sunday so we've just been talking about whether we think the forecast is stable enough um, and probably move some of my my sessions, some of my client sessions next week to give us a chance to actually get home. Because if we left on Monday, a day and nine hours would be back on Tuesday afternoon um, and uh, or Tuesday evening. Um, and then we could either be at home or maybe Helford, St Moors, and I could work for a couple of days and then we could have a, I kind of like the idea of a big homecoming like party with people on the dock to catch the lines and give us beers and you know celebrate the route well, around give us beers, <laughs> give us beers. <laughs> who's going to turn up and give us beers well, oh steve might. might steve, might. Gemma steve will. if you're watching bring beer <laughs> bring beer <Gemma laughs> i'll be too late you, you, you won't see it until we're back <laughs> yeah uh, we'll tell you bring whether beer or not. anyway <laughs> we'll tell you whether or not the steve will Gemma will bring beers um but we do have a bottle of uh champagne that i've been carrying the whole trip Tatanger, that i bought to go in the villages to carry all the way around so we have the opportunity to open that and not spray it all over the boat, but in fact to drink it. No, I think. yeah, I think that's a very good plan. Yeah. And there might be beers and stuff after after that. So that's that's where we're kind of at at the moment is that we were, I think we just basically ran out of time. It's, um, it's incredibly difficult. One of the big problems of doing this and, and Ellen working is that she has to stop. She has to stop and do work and I can't do any of the work, the sort of work that I do really, um, while we're doing that, uh, in, in the sort of way that we're doing it. Um, he said gibbering, I'll cut that bit out probably. <laughs> but um, so I'm hanging around quite a lot of the time and then it's kind of a mad push to get onto somewhere else or we have to hop from one place to the next really quickly so we can get to a suitable harbour where we know we can use internet. Uh, and we're not in the middle of a you know like a, a valley of uh, radio silence, um, which we've had up in Scotland. One of the one of the locks, uh, Loch Nadrama Beauty, it was um, no cell phone signal, no internet, no nothing. You, the, you know it was it was truly in the middle of nowhere. It was brilliant, uh, but you couldn't work there. Um, so there, there's been a number of places that that we've been that that didn't have uh, have that so that's no good whatsoever so we've had to 
miss places or stop in places that we might not want to, to have stopped to do that. So that's that's one of the difficulties with it. But um, we can come out again. Uh, if we want to go to Padstow, it's you know a couple of days over the weekend, we can sail around there and go up to Padstow, stop and, and show you guys what, what's, what's happening there and what it's like and then sail back again. So it's not a massive one, but from here, it's a long way out of the way really. Um, we're going to Pads, well, we'd be going to Wales first at Dale, um, which is near, it's the sort of entrance to Milford Haven. So it's still quite a long way out of Milford Haven, um, which is somewhere I've only ever been before with a, with a friend of mine on his fishing boat. Uh, so I've not really seen it, but um, we, we'd have to go to the tip of the, the peninsula there. And then from there, spend another 18 hours going across, is it 18 hours? to Padstow from there. That's about 13 hours. So 13 hours from there to, to Padstow. And the nights are drawing in now, so some of that's going to be in the dark. Mm. And I don't I don't really like it arriving anywhere in the dark if I can help it. Um, I'd rather sail through the night out in the middle of the sea, away from everything, and then come in in the morning. Padstow's got the added complication that it's tidal, so we can, we've got a narrow window, but <coughs> we can get in there, so we're trying to match that up as well. Yeah, there's a bit in the river called the Doom Bar. Um, which I used to go windsurfing off of, which was great fun, but I'm not entirely sure I'd want to take a boat over it uh, or get it wrong or, you know, in bad weather, that's not a place I want to be going in. So it makes more sense while the weather is, is not doing this, um, which is... <laughs> if you can see that red. Purple, purple not good. Pur purple is windy and some of the gusts were, were indicated at being like 50, 50 knots plus. So. I don't want to be sailing in that. Um, you know, I will if I'm caught out in it. I'll sail in it because you haven't got a choice. But I don't want to be deliberately going out into that because you're just causing yourself more problems than than you need to. So we're very seriously considering at this point on a Friday night to go to Kilmore Quay tomorrow, which is what we're going to do, and then jumping straight down to Lands End, round into the Helford, or back home in a day and a bit. So that's where we're at at the moment with the planning, but tomorrow the wind might be completely different and the, the predicted forecast may not be correct. So. Mm. It's 6am, no it's not, 6.30am and it's dark and the stars are still out. And we're getting ready to go in the next next 30 minutes so i'm afraid you're not going to be able to see much let's uh take it as red that i've disconnected all the uh, bits and pieces that hold us onto the edge and uh and that's about it really just got this nice uh relatively light wind at the moment so we can uh we can just get off hopefully without too much of a snag. All right, we're going. Just gonna, just, you know, just, just push us off when we start moving. Stick, get it, is it going? It's recording now. Cool. Right, we're just leaving the, the dock now. Uh, pretty uneventful, really. And, uh, and we're going to be following following the uh, lines on the map. That's it, really. That's all she wrote. There's no wind this morning, and I like that a lot to come out of there because it's so tight. It's incredibly tight. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful morning. Uh, well, who knows? We've had days that started like this and ended very poorly. Um, Particular, my particularly seasick day but it's a beautiful morning so far <coughs> and it all went really easily because it would do wouldn't it it was a really difficult one to get out of and it just happened so that's nice well I don't feel like I've just failed massively now I'm just coming out of the uh, bit of the river so that's where we've come from. It smells a bit whiffy actually. I remember my earlier comment about no 
sewage works here. It's um, like I said, don't drop your ropes in the water or anything. If you do, wash your hands. And I thought that's such a shame. But on the bright side, they're doing something about it. They've got um, a bazillion pounds worth of sewage plant going in, and right as we speak, they're digging the uh, bits of the road up and putting pipes in and stuff. So that's cool. But I do find it a bit hard to believe that. Uh, Nothing's been done before this point. Um, that's a bit, a bit middle ages really. I mean, one step away from chucking it in the street. But that's it, we're out. We are out. And we are going. These are going home. getting in at four o'clock and we can't get in before four o'clock because we can't get over the bar at Kilmore Quay. Um, so I'm hoping <laughs> we get in and are all tied up before it gets to Gale Force 8. <laughs> um, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, it's, it's, it's predicted to get up this afternoon but I didn't see anything that was going to be beyond gusting 18 knots. Um, 
before we get in, but it's now forecasting uh, for six. Um, so there's a small craft warning for uh, for six. And uh, four seven is considered the optimum scale, even though four eight is a real gale. So fingers crossed.
come into Kilmore Quay and if there's anything that wants me to kill more makes me want to kill more it's putting me against a bloody great big fishing boat that I can't get on and off properly and I've just torn my jeans so I'm very happy anyway we're alongside for the night and the first thing another fisherman comes like well you don't want to stay there he's going to be going out at five or six o'clock in the morning yeah well so are we uh, can't get him around the corner. The other fishing boat where we could have parked, the other fishing boat is just parked in the middle. So, I'm fed up. I'm actually ready to go home now. Really fed up today. That's what they moored us up next to. Nice and easy to get on and off, let. He's got longer legs than I have. Anyway. I don't know if you can see that. There's a seal right on the slipway. 